Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration is recorded for us in John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the gospel of our Lord. In the name of our risen Savior. On her way out of the door of the coffee shop, while well, she ran into a classmate that she hadn't seen for years, and within moments, while well, they were visiting as though no time had passed, that is, until her friend asked her, So how's life? And her mind raced to think of a way to deflect the question, because, well, truth be told, her life was a mess. She was separated from her husband. She was working a job she hated. And although her kids never said it directly, she felt like they blamed her for the marriage problems. And that made her time with them less than fulfilling. She was scared. She was angry. She felt trapped. This wasn't the life she had imagined. And she dreamed about running away from it all, starting over, and really living life. Sometimes it's the idealism of youth. Sometimes it's a midlife crisis. Sometimes it's burnout from the 40-year grind of work and a readiness to embrace the golden years. But we all go through those cycles where we feel as though it's time to start really living. People tell themselves that they need to go backpacking through Europe or buy an overpriced imported convertible and, and cruise up and down the Pacific Highway or, or to spend their golden years cruising the Mediterranean. These adventures, they try to convince themselves, well, will help them to really live. But when those same people return home from their feel-good trips and realize their souls still feel empty, well, they still wonder what it means to really live. And the Bible has something to say about really living, and it doesn't involve a backpack or a convertible or a cruise ship. Christians don't need a midlife crisis or to, to be burned out from work to trigger a life worth living. They just need Easter. They need the empty tomb. They need the happy shouts of, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And they need Jesus' appearance to the disciples in the upper room, showing them his life-giving hands, and then explaining to them that Easter gives them a life worth really living. The disciples in the upper room, well, they might as well have been walking out of a coffee shop because they were acting like that woman whose life was a mess. John tells us that the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. If the Jews were so underhanded and corrupt as to orchestrate the crucifixion of an innocent man, well, what would stop them from coming after his disciples next? Seventy-two hours earlier, they abandoned Jesus and fled from the Garden of Gethsemane as Jesus was arrested. And Peter disowned him just as Jesus had predicted. And despite the fact that Jesus had been, had been preparing them for months for his upcoming death, well, they still seemed genuinely shocked and surprised by the events of Good Friday afternoon. And as they gathered together behind locked doors, well, they were acting like Jesus was dead and that their lives weren't worth living. They were afraid. They felt guilty. And they were trapped in that upper room. Knowing full well their agitated state of mind, well, Jesus wanted to calm their nerves and bring them peace. He didn't ask them, how's life? No, well, Jesus said to them, 
Peace be with you. It was still Easter. They had seen the empty tomb. They had heard the reports of the women and the Emmaus disciples. But they hadn't seen Jesus with their own eyes. They weren't completely sure what to make of the day's events. And so Jesus came and he stood in their presence and he showed himself alive to them. He showed them his hands inside. Jesus' bodily presence, together with the sight of his life-giving hands, well, convinced the disciples that they were looking at their resurrected Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Friends, we have the witness of the women. And we have the witness of the Emmaus disciples. And as St. Peter writes, we also have the completely reliable prophetic word. You do well to pay attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place. This world is indeed a dark place, filled with doubt and disappointment, guilt and grief, punishment and pain, death and despair. And this world is so dark that it often makes us want to join the disciples in that upper room with the doors locked in fear. On Good Friday, the whole world went dark when God laid on Christ the iniquity of us all. Jesus suffered the anguish of all the ugliness and darkness of this evil world. But today marks three days from Friday. It's Easter, and Christ is alive. It took the disciples a moment, but they finally grabbed hold of the meaning of Easter that evening. It's joy. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. It's not sinful fear but Easter joy that makes life really worth living. Have you grabbed hold of that Easter joy? The gloomy hopelessness of the world died on Good Friday, and so did the darkness of sin and all the nagging guilt. Easter not only means joy, but peace. Paul writes, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Jesus conquered sin. He defeated the devil. He rose from the dead. He's alive. This Easter, grab hold of Jesus' life, for his life makes your life really worth living. And along with Jesus, well, peace follows joy into your soul. Jesus showed himself alive, but he had more in mind that Easter evening than to show the disciples his life-giving hands. Jesus spoke next about how his life-giving hands connect directly to our life-giving mission. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And then he went on to say, Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. The Father had sent Jesus from heaven on a mission to forgive sins, to redeem the world from the bondage of sin and death and hell. Jesus didn't just hear the word of God. No, he did what his Father said. And as the Father sent Jesus, and so now Jesus sends us. And he takes disciples, followers, and he transforms them into apostles, those who are sent out to proclaim. Paul writes, he has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, inasmuch as God is making an appeal through us. Serving as Christ's ambassadors, now that's a life really worth living. The nobility of Jesus' call to serve, well, it's surpassed only by its scope. It's a huge job. And you sense the disciples might have been overwhelmed. After all, within moments of Jesus' appearance, well, the disciples had gone from terror-filled hiding to Easter peace and joy. And then they were commissioned and sent out into the world as Christ's ambassadors but they wouldn't go alone. Jesus said they'd be serving with the power of the Holy Spirit. After saying this, when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, and what the disciples received was much more than spirit-given gift of faith. The Holy Spirit empowered and enabled the disciples, just as he does you and me, to carry out God's call. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. Fifty days later, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came so powerfully on these disciples that he turned uneducated Galilean fishermen 
into apostolic fishers of men. And after hearing Peter's sermon, 3,000 souls were added to the Christian church that day. And Jesus even trained the apostles in the message they would proclaim. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. It's a significant day when parents give a child keys to the house and an even bigger milestone when they hand over the keys to the car. And with these words, Jesus confidently hands every believer the keys to heaven. Forgiving sins or withholding forgiveness from those who reject Christ or are plainly impenitent is tantamount to opening and closing the door to heaven. The keys are the special power and privilege Christ gives only to Christians. Forgiving sins and announcing peace is what Jesus did on Easter when he showed the the disciples his life-giving hands. What better way to live Easter than daily to use our hands for God's life-giving purpose, to forgive our brother and sisters? What can be more meaningful than forgiving the sins of the spouse from whom I'm estranged, or reconciling with a co-worker or a brother or sister in Christ? or resolving differences with an old friend. Remember, keys are valuable only when you use them. And God gave his keys to us to use. Living at peace with God and our neighbor, that makes life really worth living. And those disciples, they thought they had nothing to live for, and they acted like Jesus was dead. Miraculously, when Jesus appeared in their presence on Easter, and showed them his life-giving hands. Then he sent them on his life-giving mission, empowered by the Holy Spirit with his forgiving keys. Today, there are more than two billion Christians scattered around the world who owe a debt of gratitude to the church's humble beginnings that Easter evening. Dear friends, so how are you? How's life? Do you think you've got nothing to live for? Stop acting like Jesus is dead, because he's not. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Look again at his life-giving hands. Jesus is alive. God help us to act like it. God help us to, to pray like it. And God help us to believe it. And God help us to embrace his call that I am sending you as we bring the gospel to the other five and a half billion people in our world, one soul at a time. God grant us his Holy Spirit to use the keys to proclaim his peace. God help us to live life like there is no death, because Easter means there is no death. Easter makes life really worth living. God grant it. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.